A day so big, we're going five wide. Get me, oh, I saw right. They pull me back Here we go. every time. Ball straight into Houston. Phil Jackson fired by the Knicks. How the NBA offseason became better than the on season. There it is, your moment is then. Let's go around the horn. This group ain't big enough for Frank Isola. It is the biggest story in LA, Bill. It's a round the horn. Right. The show of competitive theater. Here's Tony Riello. What do you guys want to talk about first? Chris Paul traded or Phil Jackson fired? Oh, CP3. Chris, we'll go, Frank, we'll go I'm refusing you. You're so blissed out right now, you're not even wearing pants. We're going to start with Chris Paul. <laughs> How about that for a trade coming together quick? Doc Rivers, Jerry West, and the Clippers electing to blow up the team, sending Chris Paul to Houston. We're going to get James Harden and Chris Paul in the same backcourt next season. Bill, you're in Los Angeles. We're going to start with you. We're going to start with the Clippers. How did this happen? Devastation, Tony. This is absolute devastation for the Clippers. Mm -hmm. They have the league's richest owner, the league's legendary consultant, Jerry West, the league's championship coach, and Doc Rivers, and it still wasn't enough for Chris Paul to stay here. This just lays to waste. Every, this is the darkest day in the Clippers since the Donald Sterling thing, and Chris Paul again walked out on all this. They, they, they were going to give him the contract. They were going to give him, you know, he has the leader of the team. He's a big member of this community. And he left it all for Houston for a place that so I don't So is that how it win. played out? They heard from Paul that he wasn't going to be here. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah the way it played or out did they go Chris to Paul said, and say, we can't keep you? No, no, no. Chris, no. Chris said to them probably earlier, he intimated from what I'm hearing, even during this season, hey, guys, I've had enough of this. I'm not coming back. Mm. So they made this move because he and wasn't coming back. this is what we brought Jerry West in for? This, this is, I mean, two years ago, yeah. they're locking doors so DeAndre Jordan can't leave. They had their big three. They were ready to rip. And this is where we are today. Devastation. Woody Page, is that how you see it? Well, yeah, Bill, but you don't have to worry about them being eliminated in the first round next year. There won't be a first round for the Clippers. This is the <laughs> end for them. Uh, Griffin's probably going to want to get out as quickly as he can now. I don't see him returning. I think Doc Rivers is oh. going to take another look at going somewhere else. I just think the Clippers, who thought they were going to be able to tie him up with more money than anybody else could offer, that he wanted to stay and live in L.A., and suddenly this happened. I just think this is the hmm. beginning of the end for the Clippers. Clippers that they, they are not going to win an NBA title now. We know that. They're probably not even going to be one of the top eight teams. Jay Adana? Well, you always hear about meetings going well, right? And within 24, 48 hours of the Clippers having their meeting with Chris Paul, their pre-free agency meeting, he's gone. He's out of town on his way to Houston. And, Bill, you wonder why you bring in Jerry West if you're going to do this. This is actually why you bring in Jerry West, because if all you were going to do was re-sign Chris Paul and Blake Griffin and keep J.J. Redick around, then why would you bring in Jerry West and pay him 4 or $5 million a year to do the obvious there? So I think you bring in Jerry West to sort of mitigate and navigate the post-Chris Paul world, and that's what he's going to have to and do. What is now the Jerry West is going to earn Paul that world. money. What does that post-Chris Paul world look like for Blake Griffin? Is he gone next, Adonde? If I were him, I, I would leave, um, unless what you wanted is to have the team to yourself as it was before Chris Paul got there. But before Chris Paul got there, they weren't a playoff team. Chris Paul, his legacy is going to be, it might be limited, but it's still six for six and making the playoffs for a franchise that had only made seven playoff appearances. You think in the that's the legacy? Years. You don't think it's never got out of the second round? Well, they got out of the first round three times with them after only doing so once. We know the history, but we years. also know what was what, Lob City. What was what was? They, they came short, but they filled. did more than they'd done in decades with that franchise okay. with Chris Paul. Yeah, that's somebody who that. lived in Los Angeles for a long time, his entire life. Uh, Kevin Blackstone, you've witnessed what the Clippers are from afar, and what are they today? Well, I agree with J.A. I mean, this is starting over again from ground zero. They have blown up this, this uh, franchise that we've known the last six years, half the time not getting out of the first round, never getting to a uh, conference finals, always looking up at someone else in the West. If it's not the championship Warriors, the championship Spurs, or it's somebody like OKC. So they're going to have to start all over again, and that is why you bring in somebody like Jerry West. And as far as Chris Paul just walking away from it all, I I mean, there have been signs that this has been this is something that was going to happen for a long time. We talked about DeAndre Jordan just recently maybe being on the trading block. We talked about whether or not Blake Griffin was going to take his banged up body someplace else uh, and hope that it could it could hang together uh, and take some other team into the playoffs. It just hasn't happened for those three guys together. 
Let's bring in Frank Isola here. Frank, go ahead on the Clippers. Wow. wow. Now, now I know how the fifth uh, Beatle feels. Here's the thing about uh, the Clippers and Chris Paul. You know, you talk about his legacy, J.A. He was on a team that was up eight, what was it, 18 points, about 14 minutes to mm -hmm. go against mm -hmm. the Houston Rockets a few years ago, and they lost that game. He never made it to a conference finals. So it could be worse. He could be signing with the Golden State Warriors. At least he's going to another team in the West that's going to compete against the Warriors. But why not try to go to the San Antonio Spurs with Kawhi Leonard as opposed to the team that the Spurs beat? Yes, the Rockets are going to be better, but as for the Clippers, they had a chance right here to own L.A. while the uh, Lakers were rebuilding. To me, that's all gone now. Lakers are still rebuilding. The Clippers are going to have a massive rebuild now if Blake Griffin goes elsewhere. What are you hearing on that, Plaschke? No, I think Blake Griffin stays, Jay. I think, he, I think that he li likes it here. He has his family here, and I think that he's always – he and CP3 never got along. Now, that was the biggest you know, impediment Blake thought to his stardom here. Blake can be So you man think here. he stays? Again, again, Anyone else think, I think he, he stays? stays? Woody, stays. shake a head either way. Uh, uh, Black I think he, it's Blob City. Okay. <laughs> Whatever that Don't, means. We'll Don't move on. From the, the Rockets. Rockets' perspective, what did they just do? What will Paul and Harden together look like, <laughs> and do you think they're done yet? Would Paul Harden and Paul George get them to the Warriors' level? Anyone want to get in on this, Blackestone? Uh, absolutely. I mean, if they have, they have cleared room, they have pieces, maybe they can go out and entice and bring in Paul George. That would be the big three. As it stands right now, that's not a big three, but you look at what the Rockets were able to pull off last year with James Harden playing a position unlike he had ever played it before, um, getting as far as they did all those W's, but they did have some shortcomings, and maybe that's where a two-headed um, backcourt uh, can make a big difference, but they still need that third piece, and it's all going to come down to getting somebody like, or if not specifically, Paul George. Jay, talk specifically about what you see this backcourt looking like next year. Well, I'm just trying to wonder the division of ball sharing because James Harden was tied for the league lead in time of possession per game, nine minutes per game. Chris Paul was seventh, seven and a half minutes per game. Mm. So, you know, how are they going to divide that labor? How are they going to fit Chris Paul and his love of the mid-range game, the top mid-range shooter in the NBA by some metrics, uh, with the team that values only layups, three-pointers, and, and free throws? But, you know, you look at, we were asking those questions last year with the Golden State Warriors, and Steph Curry, yes, had the ball most of the time, but what was the defining play of the NBA Finals? Kevin Durant bringing the ball up on his own and launching that three-pointer. So they can find a way to do it, but I'll go back to that time of possession. Durant and Curry together averaged as much time of possession as Chris Paul. Very similar numbers. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works out and moving hard. Woody, how the do ball. you think this team's going to look next year? And, and do they still need to make one more move so they can challenge the Warriors? Well, they want to make two more moves, and why not go get Paul George and Paul Millsaps, and you'll have uh, a 3P instead of 3CP. I, I think, but I think they can share the ball, J.A. Uh, you've, we've seen that with the Warriors and other teams. That the point is that even though they both had to hit, uh, have the ball, they got the coach of the year there. I think if anybody with the pace they play, that it's going to work for Chris Paul. Flashkey. No, I think Chris Paul and Harden, I think they're bash heads. They're, those of us who've covered Chris know how feisty he is out there, how he demands the ball, he demands the moment. I don't see that working out so well, and I don't think they're a championship team. And I think they've got it into the big, it's a big if, if they get that third piece. I'm surprised if CP3 won it out, he didn't try to go to San Antonio or someplace that was closer to a championship than Houston was. Well, Houston was close to a championship last yeah. year, or at least contending for the championship. They, yeah, Frank, how do you see this team now with Chris Paul and James Harden in the backcourt and whether they need to make another move? Well, Harden, you know, he was, he had a career year dominating the ball, as J.A. says. But I think when you look at Boston, the way Cleveland was able to shut them down with Isaiah Thomas, when you only really have one guy, I think the more sophisticated teams as you get deeper in the playoffs – you know, can figure out a way to stop you. So maybe that, now that they have both of them, I actually think it could eventually work. It's going to take some time, but Mike D'Antoni will figure it out. You don't think there'll be ball issues then, sharing of the ball? He, Harden has Total said in the past ball. he doesn't mind playing off the ball. So let's see if uh, he keeps But he just had here. his career year playing on the ball. Yeah. So, so your gut right now, Frank, I saw, do they make another deal? Is Paul George Absol the Absolutely. Today? I'm sure they're going to try for Paul George. I'm afraid to mention the name, but how about this, Bill? Carmelo no. Anthony. All right, all right. Mute, 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 mute. We're all getting muted for that. We're going to move on. Enough basketball. Let's talk about the Knicks. <laughs> Greatest moments in New York Knicks history. Willis Reed, the 85 lottery. Van Gundy, free ride on Zoe. This dude kissing Rihanna. He's worn a Nick hat in the life. That's pretty good. And today, 
Phil Jackson fired. The reaction has been overwhelming, has been hilarious. Oh my goodness. That's the best news I got all day, bro. That's, that's it's the been best news so I got all day. So, Frank, you're here for this. Phil fired. How did this go down, and where are we now that it has? Yeah, it, it's uh, shocking that it happened when it did, right before free agency. But I think, you know, Carmelo wanting a buyout and Jim Dolan saying, we're not buying out Carmelo Anthony because I'm not cleaning up Phil Jackson's mistake. I think the whole situation with Chris Porzingis, unfortunately, I think that report that came out that Phil falling asleep during a workout, and I think the other report that free agents and agents and executives look at the Knicks as not a preferred destination, in fact, as a laughing stock. I think you put all that together, and Jim Dolan decided, you know what, enough is enough. Goodbye, Phil Jackson. Well, what was it, two months ago that he gave him an extension to pay him two more years at $12 million per, the highest executive in the league? And, and, and think about this. The draft was last week, and Phil Jackson drafted a guy that he believes fits with the triangle offense. Guess what? The triangle offense, it's done. We're waving goodbye to it as you're bringing in now a new regime. So it is a dramatic move. But here's the thing. There's never a good time to fire anybody. But you might as well do it before free agency, a crucial period coming up in a few days. Bill Plasky? You know, I know Frank is gloating and thrilled, but I, I want to add yeah. a little bit of sadness to this. Having covered Phil Jackson for all these years, people forget this guy was a tremendous, tremendous coach. Best, the, best, the greatest coach, arguably the greatest coach ever in the NBA, and his legacy is going to be tainted by this. It just is. He tried to do this job that he wasn't fit to do, that his heart wasn't into it. He never really got involved in it. He never should have done it. He probably went for the money. That was a big mistake. And now people are going to remember him mostly because there's, there's a lot of young people out there who don't even remember what a great coach he was. All they see of him is a bad executive, and that's sad. Do you think he ever works in the NBA again, Plesky? No. I don't think, I, I don't think if, not as a consultant, or I think, no, I think he's out. I think he's done. Woody, how do you view Phil right now? Yeah, I think you have to separate the coach and the executive. And he was, not only arguably, he was the best coach of all time. He won more championships with two different teams, with two different uh, superstars and Kobe and Michael. And, and I don't think his legacy should be destroyed by what has happened the last three years in, in New York. I mean, he's still, a, he was an exceptional player. He was a great coach. I think you got to remember that. They needed to make this move, except James Dolan is still there. So unless he continues to stay out of the way and hire somebody like Masai Ujiri from Toronto mm -hmm. and says it's your team, it's not going to work. Adonai? Yeah, but he said he wouldn't meddle with Phil Jackson just a, a few months ago. And then what does he do? He does the ultimate meddling and he gets rid of him. But it was smart. If you're going to choose between Christoph Porzingis and Phil Jackson, this was a smart choice by Dolan for now. The smartest thing would be for him to leave. That would be Knicks fans would really rejoice after that. As for Phil Jackson's legacy, principle of peak preservation. When you think of Isaiah Thomas, the OG Isaiah mm. Thomas, do you think of him as a great piston or do you think of his time as the Knicks GM? We're going to remember Phil Jackson as the greatest, most successful NBA coach we've ever seen. KB, are yeah, you? Ab yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is a crash landing as an executive, but let's not forget where he is. He's with the Knicks. The Knicks are putrid, and they are putrid because of their ownership. James Dolan has been running that team since 1999-2000. They've had three or four winning seasons, depending on how you count it, in this millennium. They were bad before. So they are, are they bad less now, bad today? Bad are they before. less putrid right now, Kevin Blackstone? How putrid? Are they less putrid? No, they're just they're just the same. If you bring in Mr. Clean to clean up a, clean up a garbage dump, you're still going to have a garbage dump, and that is what you've got in New York. <laughs> All right, we have to. Open. How do you fix the Knicks, Frank? I'm giving you. All the time in the world, all the money in the world. How do you fix the Knicks? Who do you hire? Well, for the job? and I think Phil What's Jackson. Do? Phil Jackson's lasting legacy could be Kristaps Porzingis. He's still on the team. You just drafted somebody in the first round. You have next year's first round pick. They should rebuild. And I'm not gloating like Bill said about Phil Jackson losing his job. I would never do that. But Phil Jackson came into this job. He didn't have the experience, nor did he have the work ethic to make it work. Speaking of work ethic, Frank Isola, you're on every single show today. You bailed us out today talking about the Knicks. We appreciate I'm that. I'm out. And you only had two fewer points than Woody, and I couldn't even <laughs> score you. So that's a remarkable thing. Take a vote, Frank. We'll see you on PTI in about 15 minutes. I mean, we almost went the whole show there on those two topics. We'll be back at Buy or Sell next. Buy or Sell. Baseball news of the day. Cubs dumping backup catcher Miguel Montero for assignment. This after last night's implosion. 
seven stolen bases allowed. And he called out Jake Arrieta for that after the game. It really sucked because, you know, like the stolen bases go to me. And when you really look at it, the pitcher doesn't need me any time. After hearing that, Anthony Rizzo said that's unprofessional, so he called out the call out today. The designation for excitement, Montero says, I'm a straight shooter. This is this is how I do it. Bill, buy or sell the Cubs move and how they did it while well, DFA him. I'm selling the DFA. I know what he said was silly and, 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 and unprofessional, but this is a good clubhouse guy. Had a grand slam last year in the playoffs against the Dodgers. He, they, they could have put him on a 10-day DL to maybe let things cool off. Joe Madden opens this open clubhouse for him. Didn't seem to open all of a sudden. So you think he's a good clubhouse guy? He's proved himself to be a good clubhouse guy. And even with last night's outburst, that was still yes. in the in the vein of yes. being a good clubhouse guy. Interesting. Yeah, Three I page, think he how about did, you? Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, he wasn't too good of a clubhouse guy at the championship parade last year when he complained about not getting postseason time rather than celebrating the victory. So what we saw last night, this is a club that's in a bad state. They needed to make a move, and he was the guy who was victimized, and it was rightfully so. Adonde. And if Rizzo's calling him out and noting that this was not Montero's first offense, then yes, it was a good move by the Cubs to maybe create a little bit of cohesion in the clubhouse because there was some division there, clearly. Blackstone. Uh, I'm going to sell it um, just because he actually spoke the truth. I mean, okay. Arietta is horrible um, when it comes to going to the plate, and but also is he's not very good throwing it back either because he's 0 for his last 31 trying to get runners. <laughs> okay, well, statistically, that wouldn't be going for him. It is tough. I mean, that that. That rotation's got Lester and Arietta, who are, who are two of the easiest guys to steal on in baseball. We'll move on. Buy or sell two. Florida Gators National Championship. Their first. It was a two-game sweep. Here's the play from last night you're going to talk about. Seventh inning, LSU thinks they're tying the game. And the call for runners interference at second right there. The rule in college is out of the baseline slide, affecting the feeler in any way, gets called for interference. So this took a run off the board, and LSU was never in the game after that. Florida going on to win the championship. But in that situation, Woody, are you all right with the runner's interference call? No, I'm not, because the umpire didn't consider the situation. They went ahead and got the double play, so I don't think you uh, make that call in that situation. I think you let it go. Uh, it was close enough that it's worth not calling in the World Series. Adonde? Exactly. It's not like he went out of his way to injure another player. He was making a baseball play that ultimately didn't even affect the baseball play. So the umpire inserted himself into the conversation, of course. But the rule inserts itself in the conversation. Blackstone, what do you think? Yeah, the rule is not there for the impact on the game. The rule is there as a safety procedure for the guy making the turn. And so in that case, it appeared that he did not slide to the bag, but slide slid to break up the, the, the throw by going after the, the, the uh, infielder. Plasky. It was a great bit of umpire. He was right on the call, made the call right away, very decisively, made it right away, didn't care about what anything else, but getting it right, he got it right. Good umpiring, good job by him. A great bit of umpiring. I'm not sure it that's was. ever been said on this show before or ever it since now. been said by anyone watching, uh, watching a game at home. Hmm. I think Woody Page is <laughs> the problem with the umpiring on today's show. Hey, Woody, it was your birthday this week. Happy birthday. Happy wow. birthday, Woody. Uh, Don Day, it's <laughs> not your birthday. Get out of here. Flash key, black and stuff. Show that next. Ice Okay, keep your eyes closed. Okay. I want to show you my first ever painting. Mm, all right. Okay. Open your eyes. Oh, that's a lot of colors mm -hmm. <laughs> and shapes. So be honest. What do you think? Well, uh, I like how if you switch to Geico, you could save hundreds of dollars on car insurance. Oh, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. Here, why don't I hold your paintbrush while you call them? Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Bill Plasky, Kevin Black, is showing in showdown. Check this out. This is from over the weekend. Odeval Herrera caught stealing a league-leading fifth time. Last week, Odeval Herrera ran into two other outs, picked off a third, dead meat at the plate here. <laughs> so now we're hearing how Philly's manager, Pete McEnan, dealt with it. He fined Herrera and donated the money to charity. You think a fine will cure the base running blues, Bill? No, not enough. They need to take away playing time, that which, which hurts incentives, which hurts contracts. This drives me crazy, Tony. I see more bad base running this year from young base runners. So many guys trying to take third with two outs. So many guys running through signs. You hear the people in the clubhouse talking about it all the time. Yeah, the art of know, base running is gone. Thing, yeah, it's one thing when you have the green light, right? But it's another thing when you are running through signs. Stop! 
that time you're hurting the team, not just uh, hurting yourself. So, yeah, you got to But Mackinac do does these little fines, $1 fines. This was more than that. You, you're all right with taking the money? You know, you're he makes right. $3 million. Or he did start uh, yes, last down. night on the bench as well. We'll give a point to Plaschke and Blackestone. We'll move on for the big finish here. NFL coach in Nantucket Magazine or Cialis commercial, like Jamil Hill said. <laughs> this shoot that uh, Belichick did. Does it make him more likable or, uh, well, you know, the usual, KB? Oh, my goodness. It seems so cheesy. I, I don't get that one. And where's his hoodie? I guess you don't wear a hoodie on Nantucket. I've been in Nantucket. It gets a little chilly out there. That's an old whaling community. You know what? Put your hoodie on. I don't. It's so po. On to Cape Cod. On to the <laughs> Jersey Shore. <laughs> on to L.A. This yeah. makes him seem less likable because you have to be consistent. That's what he always says he's consistent. You have the hoodie one time and you have this phony baloney the way he looks here no i love it much less i high. love the way he looks at the camera she's smiling and he's looking like belichick i'm gonna give Blaschke the point for the on uh, the cape cod joke and the face Thank you. so last year at this time the chicago cubs were the best team in the national league and they had six starters in the all-star game this year the dodgers best team in the national league they're on their pace to have zero starters in the all-star game this is because the tv deal in L l.a Half the fans out here cannot watch the games on TV. They're not voting. So I'm telling fans now there's one day left. Corey Seager trails Zach Kosart by 250,000 votes. Are you kidding me? Corey Seager, more homers, more RBIs, fewer errors. He's the best shortstop in the National League, maybe in the game. The fans have one more day to vote for him. At least put one Dodger in the starting lineup. They're the best team in the league, probably the best team in baseball. It's amazing that they're, they shouldn't be penalized by their TV deal. Once you know, you win 338 and FaceTime 338 about Los Angeles. Thank you very much. Why does everybody always chime in? Don't interrupt. All right, we're on a 23 hour break. Hey, Frank Isola, you better run. Get to the PTI set right now, Frankie.